From crystal blades to crossbows protecting tombs like Indiana Jones, here are 10 recent weapon discoveries from our long buried past. Number 10. The Green Glass Spearhead Students at the University of Western Australia got a powerful reminder of their country's history during a trip to Rottnest Island, offshore from Perth, when they spotted a striking spearhead fashioned from green glass. The strange thing about it is, though, green glass isn't local to Australia. So how did it get there? Well, the answer lies within the island's troubled history, and it's not the most pretty story. You see, it's a beautiful tourist destination now, but as recently as a hundred years ago, it had a much more darker purpose. The other name for the island was Wajamup, an aboriginal word meaning place across the water where the spirits are. It would be used as a prison for aborigines between 1838 and 1931, and about 4,000 prisoners were kept there, all male, and mostly abandoned to their fate. The emerald green glass spearhead is thought to be about a hundred years old and an exceptional example of the craft practiced by the detained aborigines. The glass most likely came from ships and was hidden by the prisoners to use as weapons or trade among themselves. They were typically known to make spearheads out of glass in order to use them to hunt. Having discovered the spearhead, the students observed native tradition and then buried it. It gave them a fascinating, if not tragic, insight into the treatment of aborigines by the Australian authorities, and the discovery has once again been brought into the public eye. Number 9. Shark Tooth Weapons In 2012, experts received a surprise when researching the ecology of the Gilbert Islands. They're located in the central Pacific Ocean, and the local craft involved making weapons using shark teeth. The islanders would begin with a buttress made of wood, which they would then attach to an ultra-sharp tooth using cords made from coconut leaves. The weapons, which date back to over 100 years ago, appear pretty intimidating by studying an extensive collection of artifacts found at the Field Museum of National History in Chicago. Conservation biologist Joshua Drew realized that some of the teeth he was looking at belonged to sharks that were not found within the waters of the Gilbert Islands anymore. In fact, he identified three species that were used for weapons, which included the big nose shark, the dusky shark, and the spot-tail shark. It's thought that humans plundering the sea is the reason that they died out from the area, but now it's hoped that the data can be used for better environments for both man and shark. Number 8. The Dirty Hairy Slingshot in 2017, experts began finding ancient Roman bullets at a field in Burnswick, near Edinburgh. The area would have witnessed the Roman army building Hadrian's Wall and pushing back the natives as they went. This would naturally lead to some pretty nasty confrontations. These were made even nastier by the use of a slingshot, which pitched lead projectiles weighing about 50 grams at the enemy with devastating results. It's claimed that a shot could strike a target at a range of 130 yards. Using metal detectors, researchers uncovered over 400 of the bullets together with a pair of ballista balls. Sounds kind of weird, but there was nothing weird about the impact they had on a poor native skull. The balls are made from sandstone. And if that doesn't sound fear-inducing enough, then holes were made in the bullets so that they'd make a crazy banshee noise while they were fired. It settled a lengthy dispute about whether the area was a battlefield or if the Romans used it for training grounds. No matter what it was used for, the slingshot was one heck of a weapon. And now for number 7. The Obsidian on Easter Island But first, be sure to subscribe to World 5 List before you leave, because I have lots of awesome new videos coming up for you. Now, up until a couple of years ago, it was believed that the Rapa Nui people of Easter Island in the southeastern Pacific Ocean died because of conflict. They apparently used up all their resources and then turned on each other, leading to their demise. This would be based on what appeared to be weaponry that was made of obsidian or volcanic glass that was found across the length and breadth of the area. 
But everything changed when the weapons in question were actually revealed to be something else. Experts at Binghamton University in New York made a close inspection of the weapons and realized that they were designed the same way as traditional weaponry and looked pretty vicious, but it turned out that they were not very effective at causing wounds. It's believed that the obsidian weaponry in question would work better as tools than things to cut and stab. And about the Rapa Nui dying out, in fact, they were pretty successful as people. One thing that did affect their numbers, however, was the arrival of Europeans in the early 1700s, when imported disease and the slave trade proved to be the demise of the proud Easter Islanders. Number 6. The Reign of Genghis Khan It's generally accepted that Genghis Khan, the Mongol ruler, was one guy that you didn't want to mess with. We certainly wouldn't argue with him anyways. The founder of the Mongol Empire was one of the most effective examples of a military might that the world had ever seen, yet it would not have been possible without the right weather conditions. That's right, Genghis Khan had good fortune with a whole lot of rain that helped him to do his conquering, but how? Well, before his reign, or perhaps that should be rain, the 13th century Mongolia was extremely dry and suffering from drought. Then the heavens opened up and the extended spell of the wet stuff came down together with increased temperatures that led to a sudden spurt in grass. Without this significant development, which hadn't happened for about a thousand years, Genghis Khan would not have been able to inspire the Mongol tribes to join forces and take control. The American National Academy of Sciences worked this out by going to the famous Kangai Mountains and studying the rings inside the trees. Number 5. Tomb Triggers The resting place of Qin Shi Huang, China's first emperor as he was better known, captured the imaginations of both archaeologists and everyone when his mausoleum would be discovered in the 1970s. That distinctive image of 8,000 terracotta warriors was truly a sight to behold. The first emperor ruled over China from 246 BC and of course wanted his tomb to be the biggest and the best. A reported 700,000 people worked on the project in strict social context where collective responsibility was key. While the warriors remained standing, crucial pieces of the Qin dynasty had disintegrated over time. Pieces like weaponry held by the statues and all that was left out of crossbows were bronze triggers, which shows just how much time and effort went into making them. This attention to detail is impressive, with each trigger comprised of five parts. The only mystery here is how they were created in the first place. In 2014, a team had a proper look at the triggers and established that they were produced in a kind of assembly line process. We may think of assembly lines as being fairly modern inventions, but the Chinese were doing it thousands of years ago. Number 4. Viking Knockoff Swords Old Viking swords can be found in various museums and collections around the world and certainly look the part, but about a decade ago people began noticing something strange on some of the blades. It turns out that a lot of them were counterfeit, but you want to know a really strange thing? They're still original Viking swords. And if you're confused at this point, you probably should be. Just like today, knockoff swords were produced to plug gaps in the market. This would be due to an 11th century trade war where Russia closed off access to the Viking source of high quality steel. But the difference between the real thing and the counterfeits was significant, though you likely wouldn't notice until you actually went into combat. A process called quenching would be used in the production to compensate for the lack of carbon in the replacement steel. You've probably seen quenching before, when super hot metal is placed in liquid to cool it. But unfortunately with the knockoffs, it made them brittle and liable to break under duress. So if you were a viking, you really had to watch what you were picking up from the sword shop on your way into battle. Number 3. Megalithic Crystal Weaponry when exploring tombs from the megalithic era in Spain, archaeologists unearthed a truly astonishing discovery, 5,000-year-old weapons that were fashioned from rock crystal. 
These were hidden inside chambers made of slate slabs, giving them clues about the elite society found entombed at the site. Now, the beautiful-looking deadly items, which included arrowheads and daggers, were located alongside the remains of people who had apparently committed suicide as part of a ritual. One particularly intriguing find would be connected to the dagger. 13 millimeters thick and 59 millimeters wide, with an eye watering 214 millimeters long. The thinking here is that crystal weapons were the preserve of the rich and powerful, taking much effort and precious resources to make. So if you weren't wealthy enough to afford them, then you had the dubious honor of being that guy who hung around everyone else who did. Number 2. The Papola Dung Discovery there's a long history across the globe of archaeological finds interfering with building and construction projects, and uncovering an ancient skull or rusty sword when you're trying to bring a multi-million dollar building in on time isn't the most convenient thing, but it can shine a light on history and is worth stopping the work for. In 2017, the village of Papola Dung in India were playing host to work crews laying some road. While setting foundations, the crew stumbled upon a stash of ancient weapons that were thought to date back to the Gorkha War of the early 1800s. Over 80 items, including javelins, daggers, and swords would be discovered, and the war is also connected to the Anglo-Napolese War that was between 1814 and 1816. And number one, a mountain sword. Climate change is generally a bad thing for the planet, and those of you who actually believe in it, but it does have unexpected side effects. In terms of archaeology, the melting snow and ice can reveal stuff from thousands of years ago that people had never thought possible. Just such a thing would be found last year in a mountain in Norway. An 1,100-year-old Viking sword, which doesn't sound wonderful on its own, but up to that point, a blade hadn't been spotted at that altitude before. We're talking 1,640 meters or over 5,000 feet above sea level. The other thing that grabbed experts' attention was the condition of the sword, being pretty well preserved, bearing in mind that it had been left out like that for so long. The prevailing theory is that a Viking lost his bearings and perished while his sword lived on. Mind you, wouldn't they have, like, found a helmet with horns or something? I'm not an archaeologist, but, you know, I'm just saying. Thanks for watching! Which archaeological discovery was your favorite, and what archaeological discoveries have you made? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you next time on World 5.